You are a data analyst and you have a task to merge sales records from multiple regional databases into a single report for the C-level. You need to combine data from different tables and sometimes just stack results atop each other. How do you tackle this without duplicating data or losing important information? How to combine valuable information from multiple tables together? In this video, we will discuss two SQL operations that allow you to consolidate and compare data across different tables, join and union. By the end of this video, you will learn whether you need to select join or union, we'll cover the different types of each of them, and I will give you lots of practical examples and use cases. Hey there, I'm Yevgen. You're at our Ovox Bay YouTube channel where we speak all things about analytics, data, SQL, and sometimes a bit of marketing. We empower data and business teams to collaborate around their data so they can grow their brand together. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to learn more about modern data frameworks. With this being said, let's dive right in. Let's start from what is join in SQL. In short, join is used when you need to retrieve data from multiple tables, basically when you merge rows from two or more tables based on a related column between them. There are four main types of joins – inner join, left join, right join, and full join, each serving different purposes. First type – inner join, or simple join, combining rows from two or more tables based on a common attribute returning only the rows with a match in both tables. It's the most commonly used join operation, ensuring that only related data from both tables is included in the result set. Let's say we want to get information about our customers, their names, contact details, and their purchases. We have a table of customers and a table of orders corresponding to them. There is a common key in those tables customer ID, which acts as a primary key for the customer's table and as a foreign key for the order's table. If you want to learn more about primary and foreign keys in context of databases, please check this video right here and I'll also leave a link in the description below. So, let's start with a very basic query. We'll specify all of the columns we need to get from the customer's table using the name of the table dot name of the column. So customer ID, first name, last name, and the email. Then we will specify the details we are looking for from the orders table, order ID, and the total amount paid. Then we need to specify the from clause, customers table, inner join, order table. And we add the key that is common for both tables on customers.customer ID equals orders.customerID. And let's click on Run. We'll wait for just a few seconds and here is what we get. We have a list of all of the customers from the Customers table who made any orders specified in the Orders table. And just once again, we've retrieved only rows from the Customers table that have at least one corresponding row in the Orders table. I'll add a tiny infographic here so it looks very simple. You can see here how Kelly and John are not included in our results table because they haven't made any orders, as well as the customer with the ID 126 is not included because he is not mentioned in the customer's table. Moving on to the left join. When you use it, the query would return all rows from the left original table and the matched rows from the right table. If there is no match, the right side will show nulls. This type is used when you need a complete view of the left table data, regardless of the matching in the right table. So let's put this to life. We'll use the same query, but instead of using inner join, we'll use left join. Let's run it. As you can see here, we have all of the customers specified regardless of their orders. So even if the customer hasn't placed any orders yet, we'll still have him on the list. So we'll just see null values instead. And we can take a look at another infographic here as well. 
Look how Sam hasn't made any purchases, but he is on the list. However, the customer 126 made an order, but there is no information about him in our database. Right join works similarly to left join, but in reverse, focusing on the right table. When using the right join, you will see all entries from the right table matched or not from the left one. The typical task is to assess which entries lack corresponding matches in another table. In our e-commerce example, when we run the same query but replace left join with right join, we'll have the full list of orders whether or not we have the customer specified in the customer's table. As with a simple infographic, we'll miss Sam here, because he hasn't bought anything yet, but we will see that order 7777 doesn't have any corresponding customer details from the customer's table. Next, the full outer join, or sometimes called just full join. This is the most comprehensive data combination, pulling all rows from both tables. When no matches exist, it fills with null values. This type of join is used when you need to ensure no data is left behind, showing all of the gaps directly. As you can see here, we'll have both Sam, who hadn't made any purchases, as well as the customer with the ID equals 126, who doesn't have any information available in our database. Each of these join types serves distinct purposes, allowing data analysts and other team members to apply SQL to join tables to tailor their data retrieval to the specific needs of their analytics, ensuring accuracy, precision, and in-depth reporting. There is also one more type of join, cross-join. It has a completely different purpose than what we've discussed earlier. Cross-join is used to combine each row of one table with each row of another table and return the Cartesian product of the sets of rows from the tables that are joined. For example, you have two columns, size and color, and you need a result set to display all of the possible paired combinations of those. That's where the cross-join will come in handy. The syntax for the cross-join is pretty straightforward. Select Specify all column names from table number one, cross join, table number two. This query would result in a table where the total number of rows is the multiplication of the number of rows in both tables. So let's move to union now. We've learned that join is used to merge columns side by side from different tables. Union is used to combine the results of two or more select queries. Basically, its text results vertically, combining rows from multiple queries into a single results table. However, union doesn't create individual rows from columns gathered from two tables. There are two forms of union, union and union all. Let's start with the union all operator. Union all includes all rows from both tables, allowing duplicates, which is useful for capturing all occurrences of data. For example, let's say we have two tables with customers. Our first customer's table includes IDs 1 to 3, 1 to 4, and 1 to 5, with names John, Kelly, and Sam. Respectively, our second customer's table includes IDs 1 to 5, 1 to 7, and 1 to 8, with names Sam, Nick, and Anna. Some of the customers are included in both tables. Union All will list Sam twice, as he appears in both tables. So in the result set, you will see two rows with customer ID 1, 2, 5 and Sam in there. Union All is used when you need a comprehensive combination of both datasets. In contrast, Union Distinct, which is sometimes called just Union, excludes duplicate rows, only showing unique results across all of the select statements. Using Union Distinct to the same tables, on the other hand, will result in showing just unique rows from both tables, so our SAM here is mentioned just once. Now that you know the basics of joins and unions, how it's applied, let me add a few of the real-world applications of using union and join in SQL, so you better understand which one to select for your query based on your specific scenario. 
When deciding between using join or union, consider the structure of the data you need. Use join when you want to combine rows from two or more tables based on a related column, linking tables horizontally to the expand attributes, meaning by using join, you typically add more columns. For example, if you need to show customer details alongside their order details, you use join. In contrast, use union when you need to, to combine results from multiple select statements into a single result set, stacking results vertically. This is suitable when you are dealing with lists that need to be merged into one, such as combining different regional sales reports into a single comprehensive list. Union is particularly useful for combining rows from tables with the same columns but different data, different dimensions, let's say, like aggregating sales records from different shops or time periods. If you already decided that you need to use join, it's time to choose the right join type. We use inner join when we need to match rows from two or more tables where, to jo where the join condition is met when you want to retrieve the results that appear in both tables. For example, if you need a list of customers who have placed orders within a specific period of time, you use the inner join to capture the customer details alongside with order details that are present in both tables and also use the WHERE clause to filter the order table by date. Next, we opt in for left join when we want to retrieve all records from the left table, but enrich those records or those data with the records from the right table. For example, you need to list all products and any associated orders. Products without orders will still appear on the list, but with order details as null. 3. Right join. Once again, it's similar to left join but focuses on the right table. This is less common but still useful when ensuring no data from the right table is omitted, even if there are no corresponding entities in the left table. For example, if you want to display all orders and match them with product details, if available, use right join. 4. When we want a complete set of records from both tables, we use full outer join. Where there is no match, null values will appear. For example, if you need a full audit report of employees and their departments, including departments with no employees, plus employees like the CEO that are not assigned to any departments yet. These specific applications ensure that the data handling is not only technically correct, but is also aligned with business logic and requirements. If you know that you are going to be using Union, then ask yourself whether you want to include duplicate rows in your results or not. So once again, in short, use Union Distinct to avoid duplicates such as combined list of the unique customers from multiple sources, or use union all to include all rows from their queries it combines, no matter if they are unique or not. It's suitable when you need a full historical record that includes every entry, such as when consolidating log ent entries from multiple systems where each entry includes duplicates. Each union time serves specific data consolidation needs, enhancing SQL query flexibility and efficiency based on the desired outcome. Let me also give you a few of the practical tips and tricks for using joins and unions successfully. Tip number one. You can join more than two tables at once. Just add more join statements after your query. For example, this query will help you combine the customer's name, all order items, and shipping statuses for each of those items. We add orders to customers by the customer ID field in both databases, and then we add the item shipping status by the order ID field that exists in both orders and shipping databases. As you can see here, we don't necessarily need to select order ID field to be able to merge our tables using it. You can actually join as many tables as you wish, as well as union multiple tables as well. Just state the third union operator after the query, fourth, fifth, and so on. 
you can combine as many tables as you wish. Tip number two is about data structure consistency. When using Union, ensure that data structures across select statements are consistent with compatible data types and column structures, otherwise you will get an error. But if the data types are the same, there is a little hack here. But if for any reason the data types are not the same, there is still a little hack here. You can combine different columns from multiple tables into a single result set. The example query that you can see on the screen right now illustrates combining columns from two tables, clients and staff using the union operator. All you have to do is to standardize naming. We select all the columns we need from the clients table and then use as operator to standardize the column names exactly as you can see on the screen right now. Tip number three, handling data duplication. We already know that union distinct removes duplicates by default, but union all and full outer join operators will lead to duplicate records if not managed carefully when combining rows from two or more tables. So consider the impact of duplicates on your data analysis and choose the operator that aligns with your data accuracy and cleanliness needs. So, I highly recommend you to use the order by clause so you can easily find the duplicates and define a way to overcome this issue. Tip number four, use union with where clause. It's one of the most common use case of union. Let's say we want to get the list of customers from US and Germany, but here is the deal. Those details are in two different tables, customers Europe and customers Americas. So, we'll use the union operator to combine the results from two customers tables, but then we will filter the data with a WHERE clause to include only those customers from the US and Germany. By using the union distinct operator with the WHERE clause, we combine the unique customers from both the American customers and European, but only include those records where the country matches US or Germany. And there you have it. We've dived deep into the world of SQL joins and unions, essential operators for any data analyst looking to master data manipulation and analysis. From understanding the nuances between different types of joins, inner, left, right and full, to exploring how union and union all can streamline merging tables vertically. In this tutorial, I've covered the fundamental things you need on the way to your SQL proficiency. So please remember, the key to mastering SQL is practice. Try applying these techniques with your own tables to see firsthand how they can transform your data analysis workflows. If you found this video helpful, I hope you do. Please give me a thumbs up so more analysts can enhance their SQL journey. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss out on the future tutorial designed to turn you into a data expert. Thanks so much for watching this. We love hearing from you, so please leave your thoughts or questions in the com comments down below. What SQL topics would you like to explore next? Your engagement fuels my passion and drives our content, ensuring we offer the most relevant and valuable information. I'm Yevgen from OVAX and remember, data always makes sense. So, stay data curious and keep exploring the endless opportunities your data brings in.